may be seated. Our scripture reading today is from Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 through 10. The women in this passage have respected the Sabbath day, the day before, and rested, and now they come to the tomb the day after the Sabbath. They come just to be there, like we do when we go to a cemetery to um, think about a person that has passed in our family or a dear friend. Listen for the word of God. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and, going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid, yet filled with joy, and ran to tell the disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The word of the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. If we haven't yet had the chance to meet, my name is Deanna, and I serve on staff here at Summit as the Director of Community Development. Our pastor Susie is away this month uh, adventuring in Europe. She is doing some family vacation time and then taking a few weeks of spiritual renewal uh, along the Camino in Spain, I believe, and then visiting Taizé Community in France. So. She sends her love, we miss her, but uh, hope that she is receiving wonderful rest and renewal while she's away. So normally this is the point of the service where the preacher, myself, would get up and offer a bit of theology, make some meaning of the story that we just read, talk about the significance of the empty tomb and the women and, and the spices or the angels, or whatever we might want to talk about this morning. And of course, share some sweet stories and inspirational thoughts and encourage you to take that meaning that I have helped create for you from this place and let it teach you and shape you this week and into the future as a disciple of Christ. But since we have our youngest disciples with us today, I decided instead of preacher Deanna this morning, you'll get godly play teacher Deanna. In Godly Play, we do little meaning-making for the children. We trust that children are wired to make meaning themselves through story, wonder, and play. And I honestly think that us adults, too, are wired to make meaning through story and wonder and play, but we forget in all of the grown-up things and responsibilities that we have. So this morning, I invite you also to tap into that space of wonder and nourish your spirit this Easter morning as I share this story with you. <clears throat> so, we take a breath. Settle in. Are we ready? 
So now it is Easter. We've made it through Lent, and we've made it to Easter, and we have a new color. If you look around, I bet you can guess what that color might be. We are now in the season of white. Let's pray. Lord God, meet us in this story today. Amen. On the first day of knowing Jesus in a new way, the women went to the tomb. Three Marys were among the women. <clears throat> Mary Magdalene led the way. And there was Mary, the mother of James, and Mary, the mother of Jesus. Mary Magdalene was not a mother, but she was a good and kind and strong friend. The women carried with them spices, and oils to take care of Jesus' body. And as they went along the road, they wondered how they would enter the tomb, how they might roll that big stone away. But when they got there, the stone was already moved. And the women looked inside, and all they saw inside the tomb was a long piece of white cloth. The cloth that had laid over Jesus' body. And so the women ran from the tomb and they ran to tell the others. But when they got to where the others were, most of them didn't believe the women. But Peter, being Peter... He got up and he started to run. And John went with him. And some people say that John ran so fast he got there first. But John waited for Peter. And the two of them went into the tomb together. And sure enough, but they felt Jesus' presence even in his absence. But Jesus was gone. 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 And Mary Magdalene came up from behind them and she stood outside the tomb weeping. Peter and John went back to the others, but Mary Magdalene stayed. And through her tears, she saw what appeared to be two men dressed in white. And she heard them say to her, Women, why, woman, why are you crying? Jesus has gone on. Go and tell the disciples to meet him in Galilee. And then Mary heard another voice, Woman, why are you weeping? And, and she turned around, and she thought this voice was the gardener. And so she said to the gardener, Tell me, where have you taken Jesus? Where have they taken my Lord? Tell me, and I will go get him. Mary. This time, when the man said her name, she knew it was him. She knew that it was Jesus. And Mary must have stepped forward because Jesus said, no, no, you cannot hold on to me for I have risen, but I have not yet ascended. And then he was gone. And so Mary herself ran to tell the others 
what she had seen and what she had heard. So my godly play friends know that at the end of our story, sometimes we wonder together. And then sometimes we do this. We do a bit, something a little bit different to help us tell our stories. And so when the storyteller has finished, they might look around the circle and say something like, I wonder if there is anything in this room that you could bring and put beside the picture. Is there something in this room that might help us know and tell this story a little more? Look around and see. What should be here? So obviously we're not in our godly play classroom full of wonderful items that can, children can find and feel and touch and bring forward, but I think there are things here still. So I'm going to ask us, since we are practicing connecting with our spirit of wonder, our childlike spirit inside ourselves, look around the room. Or look in your purse or your pocket or maybe the purse or pocket of a nearby grown-up. And as you look, I invite you to take a moment to bring something up here. And you can tell me why you brought what you decided to bring, or you can just set it here. Or if there's something maybe that you want to point to, like a candle that's probably not safe for you to pick up and bring over, you could point to it and tell me. So... Who would like to bring something? I don't know what you're going to get or what you are going to point to. You are the only one. And let's enjoy what we make together. Alex, you want to tell me why you brought this? Well, we learned about Jesus' blood being shed for everybody. Mm, thank you. And Luke brought a donkey that says Luke. Thank you. Oh, this is the risen Jesus. Anybody else want to bring something? It doesn't just have to be children. <laughs> or come up and point to something. Come on up. Maybe Brian will come with you. Okay, Danny brought a small piece of white yarn, she said, like the cloth that was left in the tomb. Ooh, what do we got? Do you want to put it up here? I'll let you heft it. Oh, you're going to let me heft it? Okay, this is like the, the rock in front of the tomb. Yeah, okay, we've got, ooh, good heavy rock. I'm going to set it down here so we don't scratch the wood. Any others? Choir friends? You can point to something. Oh, Mary would bring her choir music because she's sure they got they left singing. Yeah, Chrissy. Oh, <laughs> Chrissy would bring her glasses. So because they saw Jesus. Why would you bring your money? Mm, Ellen would bring her money to support the work of God. Oh. <laughs> Edie would bring her harp in case the angel forgot their harp and needed something to play. I see Bo is waving his hand in the back. Okay, he says, wait, we got a Skylar that wants to bring something? Your phone? <laughs> Bo would like to bring his phone, but also can't, so he's going to point to it and tell, call everybody and tell them. What a lovely story we have made together today. <laughs>